Here I have a digital clock that I think is very interesting, but I'm biased because I'm the one who made it. I would bet that most of you have never seen the displays that this thing uses before. They're quite hard to find, as they were only used in a few pieces of test equipment and some other odds and ends. Although some of them were also used in a clock for the Apollo program. This project was about a year in the making, and I am quite happy with the end result. It's not perfect, you can see that I'm not a master metal worker, but I think it looks pretty nice. I'm going to plug it in now so you guys can see what it looks like lit up. When you first power the clock on, it displays 12 o'clock and the time does not advance. To start the clock, you press both of the set buttons. You can see it start counting away there. The displays this clock uses are called the edgelet displays. And the ones in this particular clock are some of the best ever made, in my opinion. They produce very beautiful, evenly lit numbers. That is not true of other edgelet displays. The cabinet is a vintage one from either the late 60s or early 70s and was sold by Radio Shack under their Archer brand. It took a while to find a suitable cabinet for this, so I'm glad I came across this one. There aren't too many controls on this thing. There's just this selector switch for displaying the alarm time or the regular time, and then the two set buttons. This button here sets the hours. And that light there indicates PM. And then the other button, which is labeled 10 min, sets the tens of minutes. If you want to set the ones of minutes, you have to press both buttons at once. In doing so, we'll reset the seconds to zero and hold it there. That allows you to synchronize this clock to another clock that is more accurate. You may have noticed this little uh, light sensor here. The clock has three levels of brightness. Currently it's on the medium brightness level. I didn't have the exact photo cell called for in the data sheet, so it rarely goes into the high brightness mode. Pretty much only when direct sunlight is shining on this thing, and it's not currently. But I'd say the digits are quite readable, especially when you don't have, you know, glare from a, a light source kind of behind it. You'll notice that the edgelet displays bear some resemblance to Nixie tubes, although they work in a completely different way. These displays also competed with Nixie tubes, but they did not do so very successfully, as Nixie tubes were cheaper, a little bit brighter, and easier to read. However, the look of these displays is quite nice. And they run on low voltage, unlike Nixie tubes. I'll demonstrate the alarm feature real quick. So to set the alarm time, you just flick the switch over to the alarm position, and then uh, set it to the time you want. Let's say, uh, I don't know, 5 a.m. And I'll bring the regular time close to 5 a.m. Then I'll enable the alarm with that switch there. These displays look best at night, so. I switched the light off so you guys can watch them uh, counting away. The alarm's going to go off in 15 seconds. You can snooze the alarm for 10 minutes with this button here. Or you can just switch it off with this switch here. And you can immediately re enable the alarm for the next day if you want to. This clock is quite heavy for its size because the cabinet is all metal and the displays are largely made of metal as well. And there's a transformer in there.
All right, I'm going to unplug it and show you guys the insides. I'm pretty proud of that, so it's definitely worth showing off. All right, I removed the four screws and washers that run the sides of the clock. I just noticed that one of them does not match the others. Must have gotten switched around. I'll have to see where that got off to. Put those screws out. The cover just lifts off like so. And you can get at the insides of the clock. The displays originally took incandescent bulbs. If I'm remembering correctly, they were uh, 14 volt types. Using strips of perf board here, I built my own LED holders and installed some nice high quality warm white LEDs and I did all this uh, wiring by hand as well. The displays are multiplexed which means that only one of them is on at any given time. The downside of that is that it does reduce the brightness so I had to drive the displays fairly hard to compensate. The pulse current to each LED is about 30 milliamps. They are nicer quality LEDs, so they can handle it. Alright, I'm going to try and explain the circuitry of this clock, which is quite a bit more complicated than most of the ones that I have. you notice that there's four ICs in here and a bunch of transistors. The heart of the clock is this Mostec MK50250, which dates back to the 1970s, as does the RS500 chip in the back there which is just a rebadged 75492 that's a digit driver chip and it's actually specifically called for in the datasheet for this Mostec clock chip although you can also use discrete transistors and I would actually recommend that because I had one of these chips uh, die on me during the assembly process. I think it got hit with some static but I don't know that for certain in any case one of its inputs shorted out to uh, I think the positive rail? It's been a while so I don't remember anymore. I added uh, some resistors between the inputs and the clock chip though just in case that happens again so it can't you know damage the clock chip. The Mostec clock chip is intended to drive seven segment displays and these are decimal displays which means that they have digits 0 through 9 instead of having you know the seven segments like typical LED displays do. So that needs to be translated to a uh, decimal output. To do that, I use these two chips here. The first one is this MM74C915N. That's a 7 segment to BCD translator chip. And then next to it is a CD4028. That's a BCD to decimal chip. And then that chip is connected to these 10 driver transistors because it does not have the capability to drive these displays directly. That would have been convenient. Finally, those transistors are connected to this plug and that plug is connected to these displays which as I mentioned before are multiplexed. On the power supply side I have this little transformer here it is not a particularly high capacity one, but this clock also draws very little power. At its max, this clock draws about 2 watts of power, which is really uh, nothing compared to a lot of other vintage clocks. Since the supply requirements are kind of particular for some of the chips in here, particularly uh, this one here, which can only go up to 15 volts, I decided to use a 12 volt regulator to keep the supply at a steady 12 volts. You can see that in the back there with its heat sink, but it doesn't even get warm. And there's a full bridge rectifier there and the filter cap. And then over here is the uh, drive transistor for the alarm and the uh, LED on the front for PM. I can't take full credit for this circuit. I was pointed to these two chips by a friend and he also showed me his own schematic but I made quite a few changes to make this my own way since I used a different clock chip than him and I also use this uh, dedicated digit driver chip there that he did not use and this has an alarm and dimming as well but I do very much appreciate the help well I think that covers all the circuitry in here I hope you find that all interesting thanks for watching